Before sunrise, Burn Dairy and Deli is preparing to fuel your day with hot coffee, donuts, muffins, breakfast sandwiches, and other morning staples. For lunch, grab a giant deli sandwich made the way you like it. Pizza, wings, wraps, or a fresh salad. Plus, something to wash it down. Then pick up dinner or a sweet treat and other pantry essentials. Now you can get your Burn Dairy and Deli favorites delivered with DoorDash. All day, every day, you can count on Burn Dairy and Deli. It's all good. Hey, this is Linda Cohn from ESPN, and you're listening to the ML Sports Platter. All right, let's do it. It is the ML Sports Platter. All over the major platforms, download, subscribe, leave feedback, and a five-star review. We are brought to you by Brian Comboy of Mass Mutual New York State, Liverpool Physical Therapy, Barks and Rec Doggy Daycare, and our great, great friend Heather Saxton from Hunt Real Estate. Listen, I'm telling you, man, buying homes, selling homes, it's a headache. It's a nightmare. It's time-consuming. It's stressful. Guess what? Heather makes it easy. Go with Heather Saxton today. Heather at Hunt on Facebook. Go check her out. Heather at Hunt. She does amazing work and is a licensed real estate salesperson. Unbelievable. Home is more than just a place. It's a feeling. Go with Heather Saxon today with Hunt Real Estate. Big tip of the cap. Thank you as well to the Swan and Whitaker families as well as the Camillus Golf Club. Let's preview the NFL Week 5. It is going to be another epic, epic week. Uh, Man, the games last every week so far. It's just been unbelievable. I mean, think about a couple of weeks ago with all, you know, the field goals at the end, right, in the final seconds. Justin Tucker, 66-yarder. You think about the big matchups, the NFC West matchups from last week. Brady going back to New England. I mean, it's just this league, you know, it's no wonder. I mean, the product is amazing, obviously. Uh, The officiating is brutal and the replay uh, is brutal. But, you know, overall... It's spectacular, and, uh, you know, there's there's no surprise, you know, why it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, look at what's, what's going on. Look at the games. Um, so we'll preview this. Uh, when you hear this, we'll already have one game um, in the books, and, and that'll, be, uh, that'll be the Rams and the, uh, and the Seahawks, uh, a game in which I, boy, <clears throat> you know, that's a that's an interesting game. The Rams last week got absolutely pumped by the Cardinals, and the Seahawks beat the 49ers. Now, if you follow along with Russell Wilson's stat, I was blown away. I didn't know this until uh, this past weekend. He has never lost three games in a row, ever. So if you're in a pick em league and Seattle's lost two in a row and you're waffling during that specific game, in terms of who to pick, Seahawks or the opponent, take Seattle <laughs> because Russell Wilson just doesn't allow three straight wins. Uh, I'm going to take the Seahawks in this game, actually, 31-30. to 30. Obviously, I'll be hearing from people on social media and everywhere else. Uh, if I'm wrong, that's fine. I'm not worried about it. Uh, I'm going to go 31-30 because I think the Seahawks are picking up some momentum here. That place is so difficult to play. And maybe a little bit was exposed with the Cardinals, you know, absolutely pounding on the L.A. Rams. So, um, you know, give me all the Chris Carson and and Wilson and Lockett, uh, you know, give give me it all, right? Because uh, this team is, and the Rams are favored, by the way, by two and a half. Um, But give me all of it. You know, give me all these guys. I love the offense. I love watching them play. Uh, DK Metcalf, I still think he hasn't really gotten going yet. Uh, Tyler Lockett kind of hasn't gotten going yet. And and they're both, they've both had fine performances. They, you know, four games, uh, 333 yards and three touchdowns, an average of 16.6 for Lockett. Metcalf, 285 with 33, uh, excuse me, an average of 14.3. 20 catches for each. That's an average of five catches a game. Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf are supposed to be, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I mean, are they elite receivers in the league? They might be in the 1A group, right? But they're elite to Seattle. You know, I realize that you 
win games a bunch of different ways. Defense can get involved. On and on it goes. But the 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 flat out reality is, you know, I I would expect with that offense the way it can hum and let and Russ cook that you know Lockett and Metcalf would both be closer to you know 30, 40 catches four games into the season. But I will take Seattle in this game, and then we'll see what happens, and I'll have my recap from this week, next week, uh, breaking that game down uh, as well. 31-30, I will take the Seahawks. Let's move to the rest of the games. Um, right out of the shoot, we've got a game on Sunday morning. It is the London game at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. <laughs> uh, the Falcons hosting the New York Jets. Really interesting game here because the Jets have got a lot of momentum after beating the Tennessee Titans last week. What a win that was for the Jets. Zach Wilson made some monster throws uh, in Atlanta. Uh, you know, we have a situation here with the Falcons uh, where they really, this is the season on the line for them. I mean, I, you know, the Jets are expected to not be great, uh, but the season is flat out on the line for Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta has been ultra disappointing since the 28-3 Super Bowl uh, lead when they blew that. I keep coming back to it. I know some people are tired of it, but yeah, I mean, it was that moment when Julio Jones made that amazing catch. Then you run the ball. You run the ball, and they work the clock. They beat Brady and the Patriots, and this franchise is in a totally different spot right now. What are we saying about Matt Ryan, by the way, if he's a Super Bowl champion? You know, I mean, it's those things, um, fairly or unfairly, where quarterbacks get tied to the, the Lombardi Trophy. Um, but this is going to be a, a fascinating game. I, I'm going to take the Falcons only from the standpoint that I don't trust the Jets to win two in a row. Now, look, I've picked Atlanta a couple times this year, and I've been wrong. I don't know why I got sucked into it. I should have known better. Um, you know, the Washington football team just completely and utterly outplayed them. I picked Atlanta in that game. Um, and then the other game I picked Atlanta in was... The Philadelphia game week one, you know, and I think that one kind of came to a little bit of a surprise for many just because of how out of his mind Jalen Hurts played and the Eagles just roaring. And, and oh, by the way, the week one overreaction about uh, Nick Sirianni and all the Eagles and don't don't underrate them and this and that. And then you fast forward to, you know, what the Eagles are now uh, and the Eagles look absolutely horrific. They've lost three games since, right? Like overreaction week one in the NFL is absolutely the worst. Uh, give me the Falcons in a close game, though, 27-24. Bengals hosting the Green Bay Packers. I can't wait for this game because the Bengals are 3-1. and one. They have one of the most electric offenses in the NFL right now. Joe Burrow is can't miss TV. Joe Mixon's running the football like Joe Mixon runs the football. They've got offensive weapons galore. Jamar Chase is a freaking stud. Um, you know, defense leaves a little bit to be desired. Uh, the offensive line needs to patch up some things, but the Bengals' offense is must-see TV. And oh, by the way, the Packers might have the best offense in all of football, right? They're cooking right now with Rodgers and Devontae Adams and, of course, uh, the terrific uh, Aaron Jones. Th th this is a really, really strong Packer team. A team, again, in Week 1, lost, got crushed by the Saints. They won three in a row. Oh, Aaron Rodgers doesn't care. This team's going to, no, just calm down. It's one game. It's one week. Goodness, Green Bay goes into Cincinnati and wins close. I think there's going to be a lot of close games this week. Now that I say that, there'll probably be 40-point blowouts. I'm going to go Green Bay, <clears throat> high, high scoring affair, 38-30. Uh, Jair Alexander, you know, his status, uh, as I record this, we don't know. Uh, so... That's a big one there because he's the number one corner for them and arguably the best corner in the NFL. Lions at Vikings. Lions are a pathetic group. There's no doubt about that. The Vikings have been playing really, really hard this year. Uh, Kirk Cousins has had moments. He's already got 1,100-plus yards. Delvin Cook and Justin Jefferson are studs. I just think it's time for the Vikings to win again. I, I just, you know, I, I can't see them lose. Well, I could see them losing this game just because I don't trust Kirk Cousins, and it's the NFL. But I'm going to go with Minnesota at home. I, I just Detroit. They just do not. They do not uh, have any one thing that I like. You know, in this in this game, I, I just they don't have anything I like in this game. They don't have anything that I've seen 
in years that makes me want to pick them in any football game. Uh, they are, I really, truly, and I have a couple of buddies who are Lions fans. I really, 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 truly feel bad for the Lion fan base. I really do. I mean, that is a sad sack of shit that they watch and root on each and every week. The paper bag should be out in a couple of weeks, right? I mean, let's be honest. Vikings 30, Lions 13. Moving on, ML Sports Platter Week 5 NFL Picks, brought to you by our good friends at Stanley Law Offices and Bryant and Stratton College of Syracuse. Broncos at Steelers. This is a tough game to pick. Pittsburgh's favored by a point. Remember when the Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Bills in Week 1? Yeah, there's another overreaction, right? Everybody was kind of buying in, and oh, the Ste- and I, I had only the only thing that I bought in with the Steelers was I never underestimate the Steelers, and I never take them lightly in any way, shape, or form. Because from a football perspective, they're always in the mix. They're always charging for a division title. They always are well coached by Mike Tomlin and company. They always have big time players. Uh, they always play fundamentally sound tactical football. Always, you know, it. it I feel like the Steelers. There, there there, were a group of teams for a long time, and a couple of clubs have dwindled away for whatever reason. Uh, Brady isn't in New England anymore. You know, the Colts don't have Peyton Manning or Andrew Luck anymore. But the Patriots, the Steelers, the Ravens, the Colts, you know, the Patriots never really went away at all. So maybe I shouldn't lump them into this category. But if the Steelers or the Ravens or the Colts would have, like, one bad year, Seattle, Green Bay, one bad year, the next year, they were right back. You know, New Orleans, they would figure it out, right? And so Pittsburgh, I just have this weird feeling about this particular game. Denver lost last week and got rolled by Baltimore, so they should be hungry. The Steelers' season is on the line, so they should be hungry. It should be a hunger game. But this is a game where Pittsburgh, where when you go back and you say, ah, well, you know, they're playing like crap, I'm just going to pick against them again. It's that moment when they win. Now, this game could go either way. A lot of these games could go either way. But this just feels to me like a Pittsburgh Steelers back against the wall, Mike Tomlin, you know, gearing them up, tough practices all week type of a win. And so I'm going to take Pittsburgh, 23-20 in this game. Dolphins at the Buccaneers. This should be a one-sided affair. Not a lot to discuss here. Man against boys, Tom Brady and company, the Buccaneers squeaking one out at Foxborough. Uh, they should be rolling Miami in this game. Uh, they're favored by 10. I think they cover. Give me Tampa Bay 38-17 to 17 over the Miami Dolphins. Washington hosting the New Orleans Saints. Wow, this is an interesting game here. Two 2-2 two and two teams. And I'm loving the Washington football team right now. I really am. I mean, Taylor Heineke is playing out of his mind. Terry McLaurin is one of the best wide receivers in football. They've got uh, dual threats at running back. The defensive line is a monstrous group. Uh, I don't love the secondary. I don't love the linebackers, but they can get to the quarterback. And this is a road game. And, uh, you know, I never like the Saints on the road outside of the Dome. Give me Washington. I'm going to ride the football team wave 30-28 to in this game. Uh, Washington takes care of business over the New Orleans Saints. Uh, The Panthers are hosting the Philadelphia Eagles. Time for the Panthers to get in the win column again. Uh, they had a tough week last week against the Dallas Cowboys. 3-1 and one overall, though. Still, uh, you know, a, a really good sound football team. Uh, they're 2-0 and oh at home. Really good club. Uh, uh, fundamentally sound. They play all phases of the game really well. Uh, I think they have a... I really think they have a budding star in DJ Moore. I really do. Um, you know, Sam Darnold playing really solid football. Um... I'm going to take Carolina in this game. I think the Eagles make it interesting in the first half. Again, it's all going to come down to Jalen Hurts. How well does he play? How close can he keep the game? I'm going to go Carolina in this one, 31-24. Titans at the Jaguars. This should be, right, a a walkover for Tennessee. It should be. Uh, But again, the NFL is the NFL. A lot of drama going on with Urban Meyer this week. And, you know, Here's the thing. First of all, too much offense, too much Titans, too much Derrick Henry, too much everything. They're hungry to get back. They can't lose this game. Tennessee, 35, Jacksonville, 16. Now, the Urban Meyer drama. He's a clown, first of all. Here's a guy who, it is stunning to me. I know what he's done in college. He's one of the great college coaches of all time. But there's a lot to unpack with the Urban Meyer week, right? 
The college game is totally different than the NFL game, okay? You are a head coach and a recruiter and a developer of young men. I just sounded like Dino Babers there. The young men. The young men fought hard. Um, what you have here is, is, is a totally different, overwhelming type job that Urban Meyer can't handle. Urban Meyer also has a track record, despite being one of the greatest college football coaches of all time. I'd probably put him in like the top five to eight type of range. I don't know how many guys you can put ahead of him. When you look at you know winning at multiple schools, multiple national championships, etc., uh, everywhere he's gone, he's won. Look, oh, and by the way, the spread offense about 20-some-odd years ago when he was at Utah with, with Alex Smith, he doesn't get enough credit for that spread offense. Chip Kelly gets a ton of credit. A lot of other offensive masterminds get a lot of credit. Uh, all this you know different 11 personnel type of a thing. Uh, that's going on in the college game, that's inside the pro game, and all these trickeries and this and that, and Lincoln Riley. Urban Meyer started a lot of that spread at Utah with Alex Smith. And it, by the way, those numbers got Alex Smith the number one pick in the NFL draft. So uh, Urban Meyer's a legendary college coach, there's no doubt. But with that has come a lot of baggage and a pretty bad resume. I mean, look at his Florida teams. Over 30 guys were arrested in his tenure. 30 plus. That is insane. 30 plus people were arrested Okay. In addition to that, Urban Meyer has had an awful, awful, awful track record of lying and covering things up. Look at the Ohio State situation. How in the world does anybody defend Urban Meyer there and say that he didn't know what was going on with an assistant who was abusing his wife at home? How is that possible when both wives of that coach and Urban Meyer were texting each other about it? Come on, man. And he just let him on staff. And then the Jacksonville fiasco this past week, Jaguar players basically laughing at him, saying they doesn't have any credibility, the owner calling him out in public, and rightfully so. Am I worried about Urban Meyer in, in, in a restaurant or bar with a woman coming up and grinding on him and then somebody taking a video of that? Whether he enticed the woman or not, am I worried about that? Not really. I couldn't care less. People do things as public figures. You make millions of dollars. Things happen. He'll have to deal with that. You know, he'll have to deal with his family with that. Here, here's what I can't stand. Urban Meyer basically quit on his team after the game by not flying back with them. It is unheard of for a head coach to not fly back after a game, win or lose, and get right in the film room. Many times... Those guys get off the plane and pull an all-nighter that night and watch film. Worst case, they're back in the office at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. the next day, try to get, you know, four hours, three, four hours of shut-eye, and then go right to the tape and start preparing for the next week's opponent. Urban Meyer did not do that. He used the excuse of, eh, I'm going to stay in Ohio and spend some extra time with my grandchildren, which he didn't even do that because he was out late at night, uh, and, and so that's another lie. So he quit on his team and he lied about it. And, and he is just a complete and utter, at this point, disaster. And Jacksonville might have to, you know, Shad Khan might have to say, okay, you know what? Sometimes you miss. I took a chance. I got to move on from this right now. So, you know, I, Urban Meyer, man, he's a scumbag is what he is. One of the greatest college coaches of all time with a horrendous resume about life things. Patriots at Texans. I'm going to go New England in this game, close 21-20. I think it's going to be a defensive battle. Mac Jones has been playing really good football. I think Mac Jones is really good. Um, but I think it'll be, you know, look, the Texans, this game is going to be a game in which both teams have something really, really, really in common, okay? And that is that they don't have playmakers. The Patriots cannot stretch the field. The Patriots do not have offensive threats. They just don't. They went out and spent a ton of money on tight ends. Those aren't gonna. Those guys, John o. Smith and Hunter Henry, they're not going to stretch the field. The Patriots need a Justin Jefferson type, a Jamar Chase type. They need to go get one of those guys in the draft. Bill Belichick has been horrendous at drafting and developing. There's no doubt about it. Now he has created the slot receiver. He had, you know, he did create that two tight end monster years ago with Gronk and the. Uh, clown that Aaron Hernandez was, but, you know, before we, everything went down, it was obviously a tremendous football, you know, uh, thing. <laughs> it was, it, I mean, nobody could stop it. 
Aaron Hernandez ended up doing what Aaron Hernandez did. Gronk is arguably the greatest tight end of all time. You know, they have on occasion gone out and gotten, you know, the Dion branches of the world, and they've picked up some free agents that have been great. But overall, the last several years, Bill Belichick's drafting and developing of offensive talent has been absolutely horrendous. Neither team has a lot of playmakers. I expect a lot of running in this game. I think Damian Harris will be a big factor. I think Mac Jones will have, you know, a good solid 300-yard game. Um, But, you know, you just can't win with Davis Mills. He's a third-string quarterback. They have an expansion-type roster. The Texans are a nightmare. Uh, Give me New England. Actually, you know, by a little bit more than what I had said. I'll go New England 27-17 in this game. Bears at the Raiders, give me Vegas all day here. Uh, They should be hungry after that loss to the Chargers on Monday Night Football. I I do like the way the Bears are playing, though, Uh, but this is going to come down to line play, and I don't like the offensive line play uh, at all for the Chicago Bears. And by the way, can you believe that Matt Nagy, after the Justin Fields situation, has already said that it's Andy Dalton's job? (laughs) After the throws Justin Fields made, you have to be kidding me. Huge loss for the Bears, by the way. Running back David Montgomery, one of the best backs in the league. He's out for four or five weeks. Big blow for them. Give me Vegas in this game. Big 35 to 17. Browns at the Chargers. This is a really, really good game. This is this is arguably the game of the week. Um, there's two others that I would put ahead of it, but you could argue it just because they're both three and one teams. They're trying to do what many others are trying to do, like the Buffalo Bills, more on them later, and yeah, that would be the game of the week for me, um, <clears throat> and many others, Bills, Chiefs, um, but and we'll get to that in a second, but the Browns at Chargers, you know, they're, they're like Buffalo, they're like Baltimore, they're, we're, we're watching it, everybody's chasing Kansas City, and, you know, the Chargers, how good are the LA Chargers right now? They're really, really good. Justin Herbert is big, strong, accurate, efficient, just mobile enough to keep plays alive. He's an MVP candidate already, and he's got weapons galore. He's got big physical guys. He can. He's got versatile, flexible wide receivers like Williams, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler is basically a matchup nightmare for every every defense because you know they just cannot. They can, I mean, you can't stop the guy. He gets out in the open field. He outruns linebackers. Um, you know, he, he's, he's great on the ground. It, it's super, 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 super effective um, in the offensive game plan. And Brandon Staley so far looks like he's, he's a terrific head coach. Um, it's still early, but he's got it together. I love listening to the interviews that he does, by the way. He's just fantastic to listen to. Um, you know, and, and the Chargers and the Browns, they have some certain things in common. They have cornerstone players at important positions, right? I'm not sold on Baker, but they're you know all in on him right now. You know, Justin Herbert's miles ahead of Baker Mayfield, obviously. But you look at even other positions, right? Like running back, Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler, wide receiver. You know, like Landry and and our, I don't know why Beckham and Mayfield can't connect, but I guess Beckham to a certain extent. I think Landry probably has a little bit more long term left in the tank, uh, but more importantly. Look at look at defense. Joey Bosa for the Chargers. You know Miles Garrett. I, I, they have cornerstone players on both of these rosters. I think the Chargers are really really good, and I'm going to pick them in this game. I'm going to pick them in this game. Justin Herbert better than Baker Mayfield. That's why, and they're home. Uh, give me the Chargers on a high scoring affair, 41 to 34. Giants at the Dallas Cowboys. Um, nice win last week for the Giants. They beat the Saints in OT. Nice to see, to see Saquon Barkley healthy. Um, you know, I've ridden Daniel Jones a little bit in spots where he looks a little shaky in, in panic uh, situations. However, he's been really efficient. Uh, outside of, you know, being under duress, which, look, you put duress on any quarterback, they're going to make mistakes. Um, <clears throat> Daniel Jones has been pretty good. 1,100-plus yards, four touchdowns. Um, you know, he's been good. He's been really good. And I think... To a certain extent, the Giants might have something. They really might uh, with with uh, 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 Galladay. Um, that offense has 
a really, 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 really important um, important couple of games here, I think, to develop. Uh, I'm a big Joe Judge guy, uh, but I think they'll go into Dallas and get be a little overwhelmed. I'm not sure the defensive line can handle Ezekiel Elliott, and I think it'll just be too much Dallas. Dak Prescott right now is playing out of his mind. Uh, their offensive weapons are playing out of their mind. I'm not sure the defensive line can handle Zeke, and I'm not sure the secondary can handle uh, the wide receivers. So I'm going to take Dallas in this football game. Let's go 30. Wow. Let's go 34. No. I, well, is that is it too many points? No. You know what? I, I'll, I'll, I'll go 40. I, I'll, I'll give Dallas a 40 spot. I'll go 40 to, uh, to 21 in this game. The Cowboys win it. Uh, the Cardinals... Um, host the 49ers, another wonderful game here. I'm going to take the Arizona Cardinals um, close. I love the way they're playing. Jimmy Garoppolo injured. Trey Lance last week, I had said in my recap that he did some nice things and combo offense. But people who have watched the tape incessantly say that he did not look that good. I'm not a film guy. I'm not enough of a football mind to, to, to know exactly the ins and outs of what the tape said. But I thought he did enough, you know, coming in off the, the bench and, you know, from a running and throwing standpoint uh, in a losing effort, I, I thought he was all okay. I thought, I thought he did, you know, enough. In other words, I don't think Trey Lance is the reason they lost the game. Uh, Arizona is so good right now. They're so hot right now. And I think their defense and their home, I think their defense is going to go at hard Trey Lance. And they got a lot of monsters on defense, man. I've been talking I've been talking to you guys about Isaiah Simmons since he was at Clemson. He's really, really good. Buda Baker's a monster. They've got studs, man. The Cardinals have defensive studs, guys who can make plays. And that offense right now is unstoppable. Kyler Murray, Chase Edmonds, A.J. Green going back in time. DeAndre Hopkins unstoppable offense. I'm going to take Arizona in this game. They're favored by five and a half. I think they cover 37 to 26. Bills at the Chiefs. Oh, baby. I am so fired up for this game. The Bills, ever since they lost to Pittsburgh, they've been one of the best teams in the NFL. A lot of people have them as number one in the NFL. Uh, This is a huge, huge game. More so for the Bills. From a seeding standpoint, from a mental standpoint, you know, can they beat Kansas City? Uh, 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 can they get over the hump? They've been dominated the last few games by Kansas City. The Bills need this game. <clears throat> it's a road game. It's Sunday night football. It's prime time. You know, it's going to come down to a lot of Josh Allen plays, right? Um, it's going to come down to turnovers. It's going to come down to penalties and special teams, things of that nature. It's going to come down to the Tyree Kill Trey White matchup. It's going to come down to the hunger of the Buffalo Bills, Stephon Diggs. Remember, he stood out there last AFC Championship game. He stood out there and watched the celebration. He kept going and kept going and kept going and kept watching and kept watching because he wanted that in his head all offseason and all during the 2021 campaign. <clears throat> it's going to come down to all those things I mentioned. You know, you worry still, I, I guess, a wee bit, right, about Josh Allen and his, <clears throat> you know, kind of playing hero ball type of a thing. Uh, when the stakes get high and, and, and all that, I, I don't worry as much as I used to. I think there's still a little of that in him. Uh, and maybe he won't be able to correct that ever. Brett Favre never did. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> Brett Favre played <clears throat> wild, excuse me, uh, loosey-goosey football. He played backyard football. That's part of the reason why we loved him. He's also in Canton. <laughs> you know, he's also in the Hall of Fame. He's got a gold jacket. He's got a bust. Um, so... Maybe Josh Allen would just play free and wild, uh, you know, his whole career. It's very possible. I don't know. There's still a little bit of that in him. You know, turnovers, the Bills can't turn it over. The Bills have turned it over against Kansas City. They've been huge turnovers. They've happened at the worst times. Remember last year, Devin Singletary, uh, you know, the turnovers and the mistakes. Devin Singletary with the mistake last year, you know, that drop. The Bills can't afford those little things, you know, to, to happen. They can't afford drops easy drops. They can't afford turnovers. They can't afford gaffes on special teams. They can't afford it. Kansas City's too good. They're home. Mahomes will carve them up. Uh, uh, I do think that the Bills can expose the secondary quite a bit, though. I do. Um, 
of the Kansas City Chiefs. I would expect the Bills, you know, look, they're going to have to run the ball a little bit because if you look at past history, I mentioned it a bunch, teams that can run the ball against the Kansas City Chiefs, they have success in those games. I'm not saying you go right to the ground all game long and and barely pass the football. What I'm saying is balanced attack on offense. You need a little bit of the run game to complement the, the passing game. And the Bills have got to get Moss and Singletary going a little bit. They also have to hang on to the football. I think this is going to be a great game. I think it's going to be a shootout. I think both defenses are going to be exposed. The Bills' defensive line, though, I think at the end of the day, with all those things, all those keys, all those matchups, I think the Bills being able to get a little bit more pressure on Mahomes with this better revamped uh, defensive line is the difference in the game. And I think the Bills win in Kansas City. I think they win super close. I think it's 43-38. Buffalo gets it done against Kansas City. Kansas City favored by two and a half. This is going to be an amazing game. It's, for me, the showcase game in the NFL. Biased because I'm a Bills fan, but I think unbiased take. I think it's also the game of the week. I don't think you can look at any other the same way. Uh, I, you know, with all due respect to the other games, 49ers, Cardinals, Chargers, Browns, you could argue those for sure, and I said that. Um, but, look, th- this Packers-Bengals will, will be really good. It doesn't have... The, the it doesn't have the storylines that this one does. It just none of them do. Um, I mean, you've got Allen and Mahomes, the QBs, the rematch of the title game last year. I, it's it's got it all. Sunday Night Football, prime time, the venue, all of it. Forty three thirty eight Buffalo. I think the pass rush for the Bills, Epinesa and company, Greg Rousseau, the way they've been playing, Star Latule, Ed Oliver. I think Jerry Hughes is going to be an impactful player. Uh, keep an eye on the Bills health report. Obviously, uh, I'm recording this before. Uh, the full injury report will be out and finalized for Sunday. So uh, we'll see what happens. Jordan Poyer, uh, day-to-day. Matt Milano, day-to-day. John Feliciano, day-to-day. So let's uh, let's just you know monitor that, and hopefully the Bills come with a full house mm-hmm. and everybody's healthy. Finally, we have a great one on Monday Night Football. Colts at Ravens. Uh, I just think that the Colts will be overwhelmed. I don't know that defense. They look not really that physical up until this past week against Miami. I don't really trust them right now. I don't trust the secondary, and I love the way Hollywood Brown's catching the football for Baltimore, and I obviously Lamar Jackson right now is in complete and utter stud. 1,300-plus yards, six touchdowns through the air and on the ground combined. I think Baltimore runs away with this one here. Give me Baltimore 28-10 to 10 over the Indianapolis Colts. So there's my NFL Week 5 picks. Thanks for listening. The ML Sports Platter is brought to you by the Allen Angus Pub. And our good friends over at Sit Mean Sit Syracuse. Any dog, any behavior, any breed, go see Sit Mean Sit. Awesome dog training available in and around Central New York. They've got great locations across the country as well. Sit Mean Sit Dog Training, the official dog training facility of the ML Sports Platter. A tip of the cap, thank you as well to Ken's Auto Detailing, Camillo's Golf Club, your State Farm agent Matt Graham, and Rosie's Corner. Get in there to Rosie's, man. They have brought the cold weather items back on the menu Chicken and Biscuit Wednesday, had those this week. They were unbelievable. Uh, Turkey Slop Tuesday, Meatloaf Monday, your fish on Friday, and mac and cheese available both Thursday and Friday. Rosie's Corner is a proud ML Sports Platter sponsor right in front of the Brewerton Bridge, Route 11 in Brewerton, if you're in and around Central New York. Hit me on Twitter, at Mike L Sports, and as I always tell you, enjoy the games. (laughs) 